Chapter 10, Forbidden Fruit. Japan. The evening after your run-in with the architect in New York, you and your team arrive in Tokyo. While Vivian collapses onto the hotel couch, holding her computer tight to her chest, you brandish open the curtains below the city is bustling alive and thrumming with neon. Ah, Tokyo, we meet again. It's nice to be back. You never know what to expect in this city. It sounds like there's a story there. Just a few one-off missions, plushy bombs, the pop idol kidnapping. Wait a second, I've got to hear about the plushy bombs. It's exactly what it sounds like, a terrorist was placing these bombs inside various plushies around the city. Plushies of, like, animals and anime characters? I'm not sure why the type of stuffed animal or stuffed object it matters, but no one died because of them. I made sure of it. The culprit was just targeting buildings and other man-made structures. The plushies happen to be a covert way to do so. Well, at least he had a signature style. But those poor, poor plushies. Well, now we get to add one more memorable mission to the list. Indeed. We only have two hours until the auction. Vivian, are you good to go? Yep. I'll be monitoring you via comms from this room. I got the museum layout ready and everything. If only Nelly was here to check the perimeter. R.I.P. Nelly. Don't worry, we're one step closer to getting justice for her. Vivian nods determinedly as she types away at her on her laptop. So, we get in, win the auction for Chester's Forsaken Freedom, and get out with the encryption key. Sounds as straightforward as they come. That's... There's a strong likelihood that the Architect will show up again, or that he'll send one of his henchmen. I already spoke to Marvin, and he's allowing us a guy a budget of a hundred million yen to bid for the painting. We can't go over that. Marvin, as in Director Nijin? I know you got a secret missive from him about me, but are you really on a first-name basis? Marvin was just another agent before he took my father's place, so what if we are... Nothing, it's just... So informal, for you specifically. Calling someone like Director by his first name positively uh, improper, Agent Grey. Director Nijin was friends like any of us, you know. Or I suppose you wouldn't, you're not one of them. Ouch. He smirks a bit at his own zinger. Does he call you by a little fun nickname, or do you two pinky swear before he sends you off on a mission? <laughs> Are you done? Teasing you? Never. It even clears her throat loudly. Are you done flirting in front of my salad? If so, let's get back to the task at hand. Whoa, can you put your salad away, please? But you're not eating a salad. See, this is why I said put it away. Oh my god, after all this is over, I'm giving you a meme tutorial. Oh, I get it, it's because of the cat. Anyway, tonight's auction is at the uh, Shibu Museum. It's basically the Met Gala of Japan, the richest of the rich who think they are uh, no art, lots of champagne. Mm, it's not too niche of an event, is it? We want to infiltrate without raising suspicion. Hard to say, but we'll certainly um, have an easier time blending in if we dress the part. Quick, let's go as anime characters! Callum leaves to rifle through the clothing rack in the bedroom. When he returns, your jaw drops. Vivian, is this the right tone based on what you've found? It's not too ostentatious. He turns around a little, looking anically down at his outfit. I don't care what Vivian says, I think it's perfect. Callum's lips part in surprise as your gaze travels down his body. The fabric is like its own art exhibit, showcasing the wonders of his form. It's exactly the right tone, Elliot. You should definitely match the vibes Callum's giving off. Good thing Guy has sent just the thing for us to compliment each other. He plucks a garment bag off the door and zips it, pulling the free, a sparkling, spectacular dress that you know will hug your body in all the right places. Oh my god, yes. Power couple moment. You two are going to look fantastic. Wings of fire. When it's the event of the year, you have to spread your wings and fly. K. 
okay? Callum hands you the outfit, and you go get changed. When you come back, Callum's eyes widen and Vivian wolf whistles. Ooh, woo, looking snazzy as hell. Yeah, you think so? Fishing for compliments isn't attractive. Still, you see his gaze roam over your body, clearly appreciating the figure you make in him. You swallow. Help me, uh, zip up. His eyes widen slightly before you turn around to show him the zipper in the bag. He steps closer to you. <clears throat> of course. Your pulse quickens as Callum slowly zips you up, his knuckles brushing against your bare back. You shiver. There. Presentable, at last. Only thanks to you. Again. I must complain right in front of my salad. He let out a small chuckle before you and Callum make your way to your car to head to the auction. Not long after, you weave your way through downtown Tokyo while you plan with Callum. So what sort of cover are we thinking? Fake names? No need. Already planned our covers with the director. Of course you did. You glance at him just in time to see him pull a ring from his pocket. A wedding ring. At least buy me dinner first. Must everything be a joke to you? Mmm, life's pretty dull otherwise. Really? Car chases and being shot at are dull? Well, not with my husband by my side. <sighs> Don't get too comfy. I never said we were happy. Uh, we had a happy marriage. Sighing loudly, Callum slips the ring onto your finger. I'm surprised you agreed to cover this uh, intimate. Why wouldn't I? It's the best option we have. Considering your whole we need to act professional speech after our liaison. Callum is quiet a moment. He watches you carefully. This is being professional. We're undercover. It just happens to be as a married couple. We're going to be Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence, renowned art critics. The name itself should give us credibility, as Vivian's been seeding our names into the community for the last day. What are the vibes for the couple? People will expect me to wax on about Rembrandt, or call everything too mainstream these days. We're highly reclusive. Rarely make appearances. We do a lot of bidding online or by using proxies, but tonight was irresistible. I can see why. He slips a matching ring onto his own fingers. You arrive at the Shibu Museum. Your eyes linger on it a moment before you approach the entrance. The people you see so far are dressed decadently, with all uh, the an air of sophistication, glamour, dripping jewelry, and radiating wealth. The doorman welcomes you with a radiant smile. Good evening. May I please see your invitations? Don't worry, I've got this. Sending the Elliot's phone in three, two, one. Without missing a beat, you extract your phone and pull out the extravagant script of the invite. Hopefully this should suffice. Oh my, are you the Lawrences? It's an absolute honor to meet you. His eyes are drawn to your extravagant ensemble. You're likely one of the best dressed couples tonight, but don't tell the other guests I said that. Oh, we never brag. A qu Callum quickly passes off his resulting snicker as a polite cough. Not unless absolutely necessary, that is. If you don't mind me asking, I've heard you two don't come to these events in person very often. What changed your minds? We needed... A break from the kids to get out of the house. Oh, I was under the impression you two uh, very rarely left the house. And thus, getting out of the house, you moron. You force yourself to keep smiling, even as Callum quietly sighs beside you. Yes, well, we're having some construction work done on the villa. It was more of a matter of being forced out. Ah, I see. Good timing, then, eh? I thought we were going with the whole cover of It Was Irresistible to come here. Like, to not come here. As much as you want to edge your way to the, into the museum, the doorman still seems excited by your presence. 
Sorry, I'm just dying to ask one more uh, last question. I hear you love showcasing the newer artist. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on a piece uh, before they make it big. Ah, uh, if you're looking to buy something up and coming, you'd want to... Lopez. Chew. You and Callum glance at each other. A faint crease forms between the doorman's brows. Yeah, you do, two don't have the same taste. How do you manage to work together so well? Oh, apologies. We've been having this debate for 12 hours. Both of the artists are quite good, but we can never agree on who's better. I think it's true because of his pre precise, intricate line work. And I think it's Lopez because of her um, lack of restraint. In your ear, Vivian nearly loses it. Lack of restraint? Lack of restraint? Although Jorman still looks confused, he ushers you through. Listen, artist people, they use words and meanings that we normal people don't understand. Right, um, makes total sense. Um, anyways, have a pleasant evening, Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence. You enter the museum and cast an appreciative look around, seeing a gilded crowd among the paintings and sculptures. It's breathtaking here. You look sidelong at him, watching the way the light dances along his profile. I know what you mean. He glances back at you and his inspection clears business again. Where was this energy when we were outside? You acted like you could barely stand me. We cannot jeopardize this mission when the key to defeating the Architect is so close at hand. I agree. You two need to get your cover straight. The last thing we want is for the guest tonight to be suspicious of us. We don't know who could be working for him. Being an art collector can't be that hard. I've had more difficult covers than this. Callum looks aside and then steps close to you, as any husband would. His hand brushes against your cheek, his voice low and sultry. And pretending to be married? Does that also come naturally? You swallow against the knot in your throat, curving a hand around his waist. I don't have to pretend that much. I'll just imagine the way you looked in that office. Just the two of us. His mouth parts, fingers trembling along the shell of your ear, he inches closer, the fabric of his clothes scraping against yours. They'll take one look at me and know I'm the luckiest woman in the room, smitten as a teenager. Yes, well, I believe you, so that much uh, must mean something. He untwists the pendant of your necklace and trails his hand down to yours, interlocking your fingers. His bright smile is for the onlookers, but maybe... But it's more than that. If we want to make it to the auction, we can't make any more mistakes. Then how should we approach this? Vivian fabricated basic information on the Lawrences. Our advantage is their reclusives. But there are a few key facts people might be aware of. I had a little too much fun creating your backstory. I made a wiki with things like the fact you hate children or that you're vegan. See, had I picked the other option about our kids, it wouldn't have made no sense. You made us vegan for ethical reasons or for their health? We're rich, I guess, health. The rest we improvise. Listen, I have not met a vegan rich person yet. Most of them eat like caviar and all this other shit. Because that works so well. Maybe we should practice a little. Like, who sleeps on which side of the bed? Do you prefer coffee or tea in the mornings? You have a point. We might be believable if we have that kind of information to draw on, but not here, out in the open. There's a private balcony off the end of the closed exhibit. I could get you over there if you wanted some privacy. Oh look, another diamond choice. Practice your cover with Callum. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. You and Callum follow Vivian's directions through a darkened exhibit and pick the lock to the window. This seems more conspicuous than, say, finding a broom closet. You really think a place this extravagant it uses a broom to clean? The lock pops open and you duck through onto the balcony and into the bright night of Tokyo and turn back to Callum, extending a hand. This is dangerous and stupid. Is the balcony even up to code? 
I'll protect you. Come on already. He hesitates and then slips his hand into yours. You pull him through. His chest brushes against yours as his shoes touch down on the concrete. His eyes lock with yours. <clears throat> Let's make this quick. He steps away, looking dubiously over the rail. You soak in the sights, sounds, the scent of fried eel waving up through from the street carts below. If you'd prefer to move straight to business, fine. Shall we decide on pet names first? He juts out his chin with a sudden determination over your earpiece. Vivian chokes on something. You can call me darling. Darling. I like it. Any particular reason? He brushes past the question and he looks... Uh, his look remains cool and then detached. And you prefer pet name? I always liked... Babe. Sweetheart. Honey. Mmm. Babe is eh. Sweetheart, eh. Honey. Because I can't seem to get you out of my hair. Ooh, nice one. Yeah, no, that hurt. That was a zinger. Try again, unless you wanted to be one of those married couples that bickers all the time. He schools his face, taking on a pleasant smile that almost has you believing him. Almost. Of course, honey. At the name, your heart skips a beat. You bite your lip as Vivian makes a strangled sound in your ear. Why does it feel like I shouldn't be listening to this? I don't know, turn off your comms for five minutes. Vivian, please, we're professionals. And need to figure out some basics, like how we met. Easy. Art exhibit. These people know every event around the world. We can't afford to be vague. Where? What kind of exhibit? Let's say a... Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. That seems like a good bet. He considers it. No, I'm satisfied with the idea. Okay, then. How did we meet there? Mm -hmm. I got it. We were both leaning down to read a plaque at the same time. And we knocked heads. That doesn't sound very romantic. Are you kidding? That's what you... They call a... Meet cute. You nursed me back to health with an ice pack. I offered to take you to dinner. Meat cute. Okay, I guess that's new. I guess that does have a certain charm to it. Okay, so we've got a meat cute and pet names. What else? Pet peeves. Things we can't stand about any other people. Uh, you really want to go there? I've already got a list, but I want to hear yours first. Alright, to be honest, you... Don't flirt back. Oh god. Sigh at my expense a lot. What? No, you do sigh a lot, dude. I think it's your body's response to being stressed, but you do it a lot. I... No, I don't. Yes, you do. On the comms, we even clears her throat. You kinda do. See, it's not annoying, per se. It's just very noticeable. He crosses his arms with an irritated sigh. I do not sigh a lot. You just did. You're so cute when you're pouting. While talking, you realize that you and Callum have swayed closer together. Well, fair's fair. Tell me what you can't stand about me. Like I said, I have a long list. A long list. Uh, for the sake of my poor ego, just pick one. He steps in closer, poking you in the chest. You tell terrible jokes. You use them as a way to avoid important topics. Maybe. How dare you? I tell excellent jokes. People laugh at them all the time. They're probably just buttering you up because you're a pretty face. You think I'm pretty? Oh, no. Uh, maybe I'll just... Put my headphones down for a second. Grab a salad. <laughs> you and the goddamn salad. Will you stop? There's an audible click on the line. You smirk at Callum and he steps uh, and you step towards him. He stays in place, unmoving. Well, that's good. Spouses should find their partners attractive, right? His gaze drops your mouth. His lips par, and he leans in. Eh, you know, since he's a tease all the time. 
You slink an arm around his hips as you stare down at the city below. Callum leans into your touch. Convincing enough? You can feel the heat of his body against yours. You imagine the heat on your bare skin, setting you alight. Callum turns to face you. Oh. You tighten your arm slightly, almost possessive. Callum's breath hitches. I think it's dangerously convincing. What else do we need to discuss? He takes a step back, but his hands shake, and his eyes are wide. Side of the bed, I've only um, seen you at a desk, after all. His mouth drops open, he shuts it before you can comment, and then clears his throat. Easy, left. How fortunate, I'm typically on the right. Then there's um, how you like your coffee. If you're a morning or night person, favorite foods... Is all this really necessary? Who is going to ask this? Anything that helps build my character, we can pepper in the details in the conversation. We'd already know this much about each other, if we were together. You glance at him, who is looking past you at the cab, cars below. His fingers tighten on the rail. Don't tell me, have you never been in a relationship before? Would you have been in one if your partner wasn't? Your hand goes to Rowan's necklace of its own accord. Callum's eyes catch on it, and he takes a sharp breath. Elliot, I'm... I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean... You have nothing to apologize for. You force your hand down to your side. This is you're about to step back towards him. The crowd cheers in the main room as someone gives a toast. If you ask me, it's time to put our memories to the test. Gallum watches you for a long time. You keep your face straight until you hear the comms click back on. I hope I missed everything. You didn't miss much, actually. Lucky for you, there was nothing to miss. You ignore the squeeze of your heart as Callum places his hand in yours and you return to the gala. Classical music fills the room as servers weave through the crowd with flutes of champagne. Callum offers his arm to you. Shall we see if we can find Chester's painting? You slide your arm through his, holding onto his elbow, your sides pressed together. You can feel the warmth of his body. Lead the way. The two of you make your way to the adjoining gallery, scanning for Forsaken Freedom. As you approach the raffle table, a woman catches Callum's arm. Oh, I had heard the mysterious Lawrences were attending the night. That's us, all right. The event was too intriguing to miss. The woman's eyes linger on your outfit, her lips curl up in respect. They are every bit as elegant as the rumors say. What a dashing pair you do make. Beside you, you notice Callum flashing an appreciative smile. Maybe it's your imagination, but it looks warm. My partner strikes quite the figure, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I can't compare myself to my stunning husband. Another guest looks up from a dazzling, bejeweled ring on the table before her. Have you come to participate in the silent auction as well? Oh, we wouldn't miss it. Would we, honey? At the sound of the agreed-upon pet name, your heart skips a beat. Calla looks over at you innocently. Indeed, we wouldn't, darling. His lips turn up in a genuine smile. I just love it when you call me that. We're trying to decide which item to bid on. We could use some professional advice from the Lawrences. Oh, we wouldn't want to, uh... Of course we can, um... What are you most interested in? Okay, I guess I'm pulling up some art wikis. We're torn between these three items. Ugh, God, the dog. It's always a damn dog. Pompous dog. Glittering ring. Expensive dinner. Well, it's art, so pompous dog. I've got to mention the large, fluffy room dog in the room. You couldn't have mentioned the breed? Everyone paints their dogs. It's a pompadour, don't ask. He's such a noble Pomeranian. His ego just speaks to me. Oh, good eye. The one-of-a-kind rendition of Sir Pumpernickel from 1743 from that one book that none of us could really stand. There's just something about it, little guy. Personally, I find him priceless, just like my husband. 
But if you were to put a price on that, 500,000. Ugh. So, you're enamored with each other. You must be newlyweds. Actually, we've been married uh, several years already. Coming up on the fifth anniversary. Plenty of time to get to learn every last thing about my husband. For example, how much he can't stand my jokes. I mean, can you believe it? I'm hilarious, but someone doesn't think so. I just think you need to work on having uh, jokes that don't rely on bad puns, that's all. Yeah, well, you sigh a lot. Of course I'm always sighing if I have to hear jokes all the time. Oh, you two are just an adorable. Tell me, how did the two of you meet? Ugh. We met in Amsterdam, actually, at a Van Gogh exhibit. How classic! And how fortuitous you happen to be there at the same time. Indeed, fate was truly on our side, because when I leaned forward to read one of the plaques... It's incredible how a collision can set things into motion. I had to nurse her back to hell, the rest is history. The woman chuckles at the joke, and you raise an eyebrow at Callum, who smirks back at you. Callum turns to you, that warm smile beaming on his face, and he trails his free hand down your arm. I knew right then that I wanted her to kiss me. More than anything. Eh, why not? Slowly, you pull him closer, your lips hovering just above the his as the onlookers gasp good-naturedly. Oh, honey. How did you know? You did say you wanted a kiss. You brush your lips against his. In your arms, Callum melts, sinking into your embrace before you finally pull away. Careful. You'll make a guy's knees weak with a kiss like that. My, I bet you two never get bored. You know how it is. After so many years, you two do seem to be quite comfortable with each other. Yes, well, we spend much of our time together, hardly ever apart. Then I find it so adorable how much you two still clearly love each other. If only my husband looked at me like that. Maybe he'll show his love for you and get you that puppy portrait. Who knows? We can hope. The woman saunters away to place her silent bids. Callum looks away from you, trying to school his expression into something neutral. It appears we're successfully selling the act. Just one more scene to pull off. As you move through the gallery, you come to stop it when you see Chester's painting. Forsaken Freedom. It's forsaken, all right. So this is what the architect wants. Can you see anything on it that might be a hidden encryption key? The image itself is probably the encryption key. Nothing so far. It just looks like brush strokes and paint to me. Malcolm certainly hit it well. Ugh, would it be too much to ask for an easy snatch and grab like in the movies? While you continue to inspect the painting, a man steps up beside the two of you, his eyes also on the Forsaken Freedom. Please, don't mind me. I'm simply showing my admiration before it goes up for auction later. His tone is deceptively light, and you exchange a look with Callum. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Mr. Herato Tanaka. I believe you two are the infamous Lawrences. Gossip flies fast through this crowd. Are you interested in bidding on the Forsaken Freedom too, Mr. Tanaka? I haven't decided before now, but now that I'm seeing it, I may just do that. I do not like the way he just said that. Highly suspect. Mr. Tanaka. What do you think about the brushstroke technique? They're prominent. Harato glances between you, then up at the painting. I get a sense of grief, nostalgia, from the way the artist twists his brush. Like here under the clouds, it dark despite the light. But I'm only an amateur collector, surely you're much more familiar with technique than I. We're hoping to add it to our next exhibit, testing the waters. It seems I have competition. 
You're correct. I hope you're prepared to fight. I'll do what needs to be done, Miss Lawrence. This is so weird, right? Try getting a reaction out of him. Show your hand a bit. See what he knows. If I may ask, why this painting? There are plenty of good pieces to choose from. We have several on our shortlist. You're the Lawrence's, yes? Sure you can explain the draw of good art better than I can. It's important to us because... There's more to a piece of work uh, like this than meets the eye. You watch his face as you lay the bait. He smiles. It t stiffens, turning false. Yes, well, that's the key, isn't it? To always go after the art that really makes a difference. He just said key, right? You both heard that? Rato's expression doesn't change, but his tone definitely shifted. A voice over the loudspeaker announces that the auction is about to begin. I'll see you on the auction floor. It almost reminds me of Hanzo or Genji. You certainly will. May the best bitter win. You and Callum linger behind as Harato joins the throng of people heading towards the main room. Okay, that was weird. That was weird, right? Definitely. Now he knows we want the painting, too. We've got a large budget. Gaia's behind us. Hopefully that will be enough. What if it isn't? I mean, of all the paintings, Harato had to choose this one. He seemed really evasive. What was up with that? I think... He's working for the architect. He's missing a big piece of his puzzle. He's a genuinely weird guy. Now he's working for the architect. He was pretty hard to read, but someone that cagey? It can't be coincidence. It's certainly a possibility the architect must have needed uh, someone besides the contractor to do this job for him. Unless Harado is the contractor. Even more reason to be careful. No matter who Harato truly is, we can't let him outbid us. No, I don't think we would have had that much of a pleasant conversation if he was a contractor. You and Callum take your seats across the way from him. Callum presses the bidding paddle into your palm. I'll keep an eye on our new friend, you bid. Don't let him win. 181 bidding paddle. The power! Don't get cocky. We only have 100 million yen to spend. You can't go higher than that. In fact, it would be best if you don't spend it all. At the front of the room, the auctioneer takes to the podium. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to tonight's auction. I know you've been raring to go at the snatching up these priceless paintings. Our first lot of the evening is the beloved tightrope dancer, famed all over its for its expressive use of... The next few minutes are a flurry of gavel banging, number calling, paddle raising. You glance at Harado again. Our friend seems pretty impatient. Only waiting for the same thing we're waiting for. After what feels like a lifetime of people throwing their money around, a familiar painting is brought on stage. This lot was painted somewhat recently by an anonymous artist. It was donated by the late Sanctuary CEO Chester Stromberg. May he rest in peace. Across the room, Harato's eyes glare with determination as he straightens in his seat. Do I hear 10 million yen to start off the bidding? Keep up with the minimum bid. Immediately, you raise your paddle. 10 million from guest 181. Oh. But what's this? Harado has raised his paddle at the same time and is now glaring at you. Looks like guest 61 wants a bit of the auction. Can, uh, how about we raise the bid to 20 million? Again, you both stubbornly lift your paddles. He won't give up anytime soon, I think. The thing I won't either. Do I hear 50 million? The price jump makes you a little nervous, but when you see Harato raise his paddle again, you do the same. Oh my, how exciting. At this rate, guy is gonna have to furlough half the agency just to stay a solvent. I need to plan my next bid more carefully. Oh, I've watched reality shows about this, but you gotta read the other person. Guess what their upper limit is. Read his body language. Does he seem tense? Yes. Excited? No. Does he hesitate before bidding? 
You glance over at him. He hesitates before lifting the paddle to 70 million. His eyes are shifting nervously. I wonder if we can scare him into thinking we have more money than we do. Careful, Jones. You don't want to push him too far. The current high bid is 70 million. Do I hear 80? Let's keep a little wiggle room. 90. That's still a hike. You rest your hand on his knee, giving it a gentle pat, then lean back in your seat, making eye contact with Harado with a lazy smirk. 90. The crowd gasps again, fluttering with excitement. His eyes widen. 90 million. Does anyone want to wish to bid higher? Anyone? Even as Callum stills beside you, you keep staring at Harado like you have all the money to waste, daring him to go higher. Damn it. He swallows and keeps his paddle down, defeated. Looks like guest 181 is about to walk away as a lucky new owner of Forsaken Freedom. I can't believe that work. What can I say? When you're good, you're good. Going once, going twice. But before the auctioneer bangs his gavel, an employee runs up to him, furiously whispering in his ear. What? After a tense moment, the auctioneer clears his throat and leans back to the microphone. I'm so sorry, but it seems as if we've received a new bid for the Forsaken Freedom. A new bid? From who? The current high bid is now 300 million yen. Going once, going twice. That's three times what Gaia told you to pay, right? You and Harato exchange a stunned look, neither of you raising your paddles. Then sold to the... Contractor? Called it. I know. Victory is mine. Without further ado, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Pretty. Plenty. Oh, Jesus. Plenty of links to check out. Um, feel free to check those out. Uh, remember, support the channel. It's very much appreciated. Without further ado, sorry about being a little bit late today, but I love your beautiful faces, and I got it done. Catch you all later. Peace out.